Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Welcome to our show, our channel. We're in the shop, Mitch behind the cameras. And we're working on bull moose handlebars. Last week, last episode, we made the fixture. This is the fixture. Since then, I've done some other things. This is how the bars have to be bent. We're gonna use the arbor press over here. Do you see how this fits round, round the handlebar? It's a 7 8 handlebar, it's chrome molly. And then this fits on like that. And then we're gonna have a felt pen mark. And then this guy goes in the ram of the arbor press and we press down and that's how we make the bend. We're gonna have a stop here so that they're all consistent. And how we get this to be how one of the bends is in line with the, with the second bend, that's this thing. I showed you this last time, but it didn't have the hole in it or the, or the pinch, the Allen screw to hold it there. So this slides on like that. And then it gets locked. It doesn't have to be super tight. And then it, it gets leveled by eyeball. Don't need a spirit level, just eyeball. That's what I think. And then, then the ram makes a bend, and then it gets moved up to the second position. And we make the second bend. And if this is level, the, all the bends, these two bends ought to be in line with each other. So that's what we're aiming for. I made the clamp tubes. It's, it's 4130 chromoly. I made the pinch lugs. And I was thinking about this because I was thinking of making the bars and then, and then tacking this on later. I think what I want to do is to, is to tack it on first because I can just use a vise over at the TIG station, one tack on each side, and then, it's, and then I position this on the fixture. That's an easier way of doing it. These are the pieces that get used for the brake hanger. So this is, it's mild steel, it's 16th inch thick. It has to be bent, so just now I took some aluminum and I made up a little bending fixture here. So this goes, I mark the center on both, I position it. I'm gonna hold it in the vise on the edge and then I use a little hammer and, and I tap it round. So that's all coming up. First thing then is to mark the bars where the bend's gonna go, then we'll go to the arbor press and see if we can bend it nicely. So I think we want the bend to be in the middle there, so like that. Okay, so. Here's the bar. Okay, so there's a little bit of gap there, but when we, when we press down, we got what we call uh, a spring back. So if you go a little bit more, that'll be fine. I'm gonna eyeball this, I'm gonna make it level. Okay, let's see what happens here. I've got my stop. I've got it leveled. Oh, it's, it's got some strength to it. There we go. So I went down to the stop. Okay, that looks good. We tacked. It's been a long time since I made a, a bull moose handlebar. At least a couple decades, I think, and I can't remember how I did it last time. Old memory banks have gone, have faded a little bit. 
This is anti-seize. After it gets hot from the tacking, it just makes it come out easier. All right, so we've got the clamp tube, the pinch lug with the bar. Now we need the struts. So that's where this tubing comes in. This is three quarter inch or four nine chromoly. So we have to figure out the angle here. And this, this gets mitered now. An angle like about that, well, what is that? 15 degrees or something? No, more like 20. Okay, we're gonna take a small cut and see what happens. Okay, 20 degrees here, and can you see how got a gap? This this edge has to go over to here, so it's got to go like like that. So maybe maybe 24 degrees. Let's try that. Another four degrees. So that has to be like that, so. This is, this is tricky because it's the intersection of two things at completely different angles to each other. So I think we're gonna go for three more degrees. Let's try that. there. It's an eyeball thing trying to figure out where the end of the tube is actually going to be. If you leave it too long you got a lot of filing and if you leave it, make it too short that's a problem. So that looks like it that looks like it could work right there. I'm marking the center line right in line with this. So that's what I put in the in the mill. That's the top. And I, I have to take off the least, least, least amount. Okay, that's going to work. Just like that. Somehow I have to hold these. I guess that's going to be masking tape. I don't have uh, don't have a fancy fancy fixture to hold it. See how we did. There we go. Look at that. Woohoo! All 
I haven't braised for quite a while. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen. I like to go around with the nickel silver first, 16th inch nickel silver rod. Looks like it's coming up to temperature. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell when you got the dark glasses on, so always looking for the dull red. Okay, that's the pinch lug. Now we just weld on the two struts, braze on the two struts. We are on day two now. While you were gone, I brazed this and this, and then I filed and sanded this and this. I left this one so that I can show you how I filed and sanded. So first I use this. It's a quarter inch grinder and it's got a spiral roll on it. It's not quite new, but it's still in good shape. It's like a piece of emery cloth, which is on a taper and it's wound around and that's, that's the glue. So you don't want to go there because if you do, it'll explode. So that's, that's your working area. Okay, I'm going to file it up. Then we use the belt sander, okay? I use the spiral roll to make the shape and then I use the belt sander, it flows it, it flows it all in, it makes it very smooth. I made this belt sander a couple of years ago. If you go back into the archives, you can prob probably, well I know you can find the video that shows this belt sander being made. And the last part is 80 grit. It's a cloth backing. And this is called fine fingering. I used to teach frame building 101 and there was a student, his name was Mario and he was pretty funny and he's the guy that named it fine fingering. Helps if your fingers are pretty strong. And it gets all those little bits out which the belt sander can't get because the belt sander, it often can't go everywhere. It goes a lot of places, but not everywhere. Like, see that's a little, little spot there that the belt sander can't get. See that little spot right in the middle there? That's what I'm trying to get out. It's gonna get painted, so, so the paint's gonna hide some, but I can get that out just a little bit, I think.
I've got a 7 8 tube here. It's chromoly, so it's usually nicely made. And the size is 874. Okay, that's good. A thou under size. So we'll see if it fits. I'd kind of be surprised if it does. Feels like it's got grunge in there. And it's a no-go, so this has to be honed. I'm going to set the hone up. We're going to hone it, and then slot. Okay, I'm on the hone here. It's a pinhole grinder, a Sunnen machine. When I started working in machine shops when I was 18, first machine I used. So this turns around. This is the oil, honing oil. Let's see what happens. See if I got this right. Okay. It sounds out of round, doesn't it? I haven't really started honing it. Okay, it's starting to hone now. I've got the mandrel. I got the stone expanded. This is how you expand the stone. Each of those is a thou, apparently. Look at that. That's good. That's a good fit. Let's get the middle right there. I could have eyeballed it probably. So, this is the milling machine. This is turning around. How would you hold this? That's one of the things that I couldn't figure out for a while. And then a few nights ago, I was in the shop here and I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to use the fixture. Like that. Do you see this? This is a big piece of solid steel and I drilled a half inch hole through it. Do you see here? I've got a half inch hole here. Well, this is going to go on the mill, on the table, and this is going to sit on the table and get bolted down. There's going to be a bolt that comes up from the mill table, and that's going to hold that like that. So that's pretty solid, isn't it? And then we're going to come in like that, and we're going to cut the slot. So what's going to happen is, is the fixture, it's going to end up with a slot and that's okay it's just it's a fixture so that's what's going to hold it oh and I'll also put in the in the cap here so that this is held otherwise this is going to vibrate so this gets held so everything here in the fixture gets a slot cut that's just how it is I think I should be through at that stage. There we go. 
that is a whole slot. So I have to take off the burrs and uh, what we're going to do now, now that that is done, that's a big thing to cross off because I wasn't sure how that was going to happen exactly. What's next is the, is the brake hanger. Remember that? We're going to mark the middle and then here, that's going to be the center right there. Because if I just hit like that, it might not bend that sharp. But if I do this, you get a nice sharp bend. So what we do now is we tack it yeah see that it's got the sensor line i can look right down through the hole and i can see if it's lined up that was the tiniest tack i'm going to go braze that up drill the hole and then we'll attach this It's a little bit of nickel silver. That's it. So we take a ruler, hold it at a 45 and drag it back. Can you see those lines? Those are gonna help me. Now I draw a line around here. It doesn't go real close, but that's okay can be accurate enough. So do you see how this works? There's, there's my center and I want this to be level. This is my makeshift fixture and I'm eyeballing this and this as best I can. So this is almost lost up. I have to drill the hole and then when that goes on at the right angle See the lines, and when this is in the middle, then it gets nickel silvered on. Let's drill the hole now. It should work right underneath. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's a wrap for this episode of making a pair of bull moose bars. Thank you for watching. Mitch and I like coffees. Please help us out and uh, please like and subscribe. Take care. See you next time.